How to YouTube? Oh, stretch my legs. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm reading this off a script. Just a brief notice before I start reading. This video is about the elephant in the room: religion and politics. Ooh, there's a lot of how-to content at the end of this video, so I advise you get a pen and paper ready if you really want to take my advice. Really want to take my advice and change your life? You probably won't, though. No. You probably won't. How many videos do you see on this shit? <laughs> Every day. Come on. That's a challenge. Get a pen and paper ready. Listen. Let's strap in. Ah. So, religion. Mm. Let's start on the positives. Well... I like the pretty aesthetics. I like the art. Yeah, and help the proverbs, moral for more guidance. That's the helpful soul food part. That's the part I like. Now, a lot of more passive individuals can appreciate a lot of individuals within the churches. And, you know, the awesome emotional freedom the permission slips from the great teacher can give us. Come on, who hasn't been turned on by, like, uh, Handel's Messiah? That, that, that's powerful stuff, is what I'm getting at. But, but, <laughs> I also like other pretty art and moral guidance, like fractals and Ferris Bueller. <laughs> so, what about the negatives? Well, these ten points are totally valid, logical, and with proof in and of themselves, so if you're getting offended, I will only say that offence is taken, not given. But here goes. Firstly, it intellectually devastates, it suppresses free thought and experimentation through outright lies, fears, and the laws of social influence and conditioning, and corrupts all other social institutions and individuals within those institutions by a matter of degree into the fear of survival against an angry creator who hates them, almost by way of its mere existence as a hive mind entity that billions mindlessly follow. It makes others assume life on this planet isn't important because they're all going to heaven. It makes others assume they're more important than they are. I had to quote Bill Maher. It's ego masquerading as humility. It suppresses scientific research, say, stem cells, from the misguided belief that says that only religion has a monopoly on morality, and that only religious institutions have the ability to define what life is. I'm sorry, pardon? I think it's only the heart and mind of yourself that could ever define what life and love truly are. You get to decide what a baby is. You get to decide what a human being really is. Simple as that. It's your choice. I know what I choose. I wouldn't do it, but I'm not a woman, so I won't say anything. It psychologically devastates through infantilizing people into fearing things that don't present themselves outside the fantasy theater of their own mind. It emotionally devastates people by spreading the notion that we are broken, inherently imperfect individuals, and that God, again, that God hates you. It physically and sexually devastates. It attacks women and gays, allows for arranged marriages, honor rapes, systematic abuse of altar boys, spreading of AIDS in Africa, and worst of all, denial of all of the above. It financially devastates, robbing the desperate of their money in the name of false hope. It sociologically devastates, produces endless wars, the Crusades, 9-11, fat wars, genocide, sacrifice, burning at the stake, and suicide bombing, because certitude, inflexibility to reality, and intolerance through fear inevitably lead us to violence. It solves no emotional or real-world problems. It only assumes it does. It doesn't take away the fear of death. It provides a cloth-like covering long enough to realize that you're being fucked over by it. It fools others into believing this, and it's a travesty. I'm sorry, folks. Only real, smart, balanced, sane people solve problems. There. Now my hat is in the ring. Okay? The great UK comic Jimmy Carr has said, If we are all God's children, what makes Jesus so special? And yeah, the answer was... Nothing. And here's where my spiritual worm turns. This is where you get to find out what I believe. We all can do what Jesus did. Even Jesus said so. You are all children of God. Even the least among you can do all I have done. The kingdom of heaven lies within. And strangely enough, when viewed through the lens of the New Age esoteric law attraction movement, a movement which many are so eager 
to completely decry and snigger at. You know, the spiritual healing community, psychics, and the people James Randi loves to shoot down. The very structures I'm experimenting with. Jesus' words for come into full clarity. I believe Jesus was an ascended master that came here to teach us spiritual laws. Not create an institution that serves as a tax break for pedophiles. It, is, it becomes so hard, though, to separate religion and spirituality, or even have a solid argument, hasn't it? Because the information we base our conclusions on is utterly littered in gaslighting, willful omission, and outright bullshit. In the Apocrypha, the part of the Bible that was not included in the final text, it was edited out by the Roman Constantine, Roman Emperor Constantine, and his little cabal of advisors and like manipulators. It was reported that young Jesus killed a bird out of spite and brought it back to life. Well, then, isn't it obvious, if you believe that Jesus existed, if he existed at all, that he wasn't perfect, that he was, in fact, one of us? No, no, I'm not even going to get into the whole Virgin Mary thing. I mean, I don't think anyone in this day and age can accept that. I'm sorry. Even if you don't believe that or anything else I've said, and here's the important part, you don't have to and I don't want you to, that just proves the party line story is full of shit. I can't be bought by anyone with a functioning brainstem! Even if you say you do, your words don't convince me. You are living in fear. I watch my heroes. Great comedians. George Carlin, the aforementioned Bill Maher. Bill Hicks. Huh? Make salient points that utterly castrate religion of its power. Bill Hicks said, Eternal damnation awaits anyone that questions God's infinite love. <laughs> That's the message we're brought with. Their whole thesis can be condensed to the following. If I can come up with a god that's more believable and trustworthy than yours, that makes you look stupid. So why would I go back to your primitive, stupid, pre-science, desert-dwelling theology? Now, I can't go as far as them in denouncing the idea of a god. I can't say people couldn't pray a world, pray away, sorry, physical world circumstance. Because I've seen too much come out of the New Age movement. And had a spiritual experience myself. He exploded in my head for an hour and did not go away. Completely flabbergasting medical science, as it should. I've seen too much to deny that appreciating from the deepest place within your heart, consistently offering joy. And I've seen too much to believe that doesn't produce incredible results. People have cured themselves of illness, financial scarcity, of loneliness, of all manner of suffering using these techniques. Most don't, because they're too interested in bright, shiny objects. And then skeptics come alongside and destroy the entire esoteric New Age manifestation movement on the back of these assholes. As if, you know, a guy taking drugs who jumps out of a window makes all drug users look bad. Hmm. Now who's painting us all with the same brush? I don't think it's God's will that these things happen. I don't think God gives a shit. God seems to create a system where our will be done. You know, it's our will the great things happen. Under the proviso that we live like we still have a will to live. <laughs> By the results we're getting in the real world today, it's clear most of us do not. We prefer to poison ourselves slowly with meaningless structure, slave wages, poisonous food additives, corruption, and Rob Schneider. Personally, it's also my will to do away with the bigotry, intolerance, murder, and stupidity of religion, the arrogance of its followers, and the politics of fear that have utterly corrupted our society and system of leadership. <laughs> we filter our reality all the time. No one is the shining example of a book. I'm not the shining example of my words, and I wouldn't expect you to think I was. Why? Because our perception contradicts itself within moments, according to the emotional shifts we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. I heard so much crap about picking and choosing like it was a crime when I was still in the church, yet we all do that all day every day. So who's the hypocrite here? So, in so much of society, we can only go by social consensus, since it's clear God isn't going to come down from the sky and hand us the answer anytime soon. But when those whom we trust to provide an accurate consensus reality, including the most trusted form of profession, medical doctors, are paid off by the ruling class, whom do you trust to give you a valid answer? The people who are around you to, like, to bias your perspective? 
or even even if it mattered, you know. So here's my perspective. I like the idea that many meditative yogis can perceive and literally see certain scientific principles, but I have no way of proving this through reason. In fact, that skill comes through years of deconditioning through mental reason in a very specific way. And that admittedly seems dangerous and cult-like, but I can't deny my interests or my reason, and least of all, my experience. It does seem that reality is as much self-generative as observational. Quantum physics has proven this. A particle is a wave, and vice versa, depending on what you, what you see as, a, as your perspective. I like to speculate that emotional force seems to directly generate certain results. After all, we all know that actions based in fear end badly, for example. So it can be theorized that those who believe certain things en masse with a certain emotional bent create that with that emotional bent. They create what they most love or they most fear. If a society got together and were more appreciative, eventually something would crack. There's part of the mind called the RAS, the Reticular Activation System, that seeks out what you focus. I'm pretty sure that with enough time and leverage, you get what you look for, and you get the results you want, provided you're not arrogant enough to only seek explanations of the old which uphold your limited point of view of the world. Now, that's not an excuse for those who are blindly socially conditioned to start defending a book which contradicts itself and promotes genocide and hatred of certain classes and, and races. <laughs> this is an emotional exercise that comes from your gut, not a purely mental one. You have to feel it in your gut. There's no other way to prove this except to try it or deny it, and even then you can't start mouthing off about your great discovery, because absolute evidence would never convince everyone. And no individual can be convinced the outsiders will. You follow this path when your awareness, your heart and your gut tells you you're ready, and only then. So, I have huge misgivings about talking about any of this. Any schmuck can start a religion and get on top of a soapbox and start speeching the truth. I don't want to spread something that others aren't ready to hear. In fact, people follow their own lives regardless of whatever spiritual truth may or may not exist. So, and take this sentence any way you want. Go live your life. The only limit is your soul. <laughs> Which brings me, of course, to how we live our lives. And that's the domain of politics. For me, this is a much easier topic to tackle. Even though ultimately, religion and politics are one and the same. It's all brokering deals, and believe me, the deals are broken. First off, everything is political. Everything is political nowadays. Always has been, really. What you eat, what you wear, what you say, even what you think, has an element of consequence. With seemingly grave connotations. Get out the spooky language, folks. You're gonna die! Oh, it's getting absurd these days! You wear clothes, you wear some kid's gonna work for nothing to make them, and it makes you feel like shit. You eat meat, some guy comes up to you with a picture of an abattoir. You try to get an abortion, some righteous religious man, a man, is telling you, as I presume as he is a woman, <laughs> yeah, telling you what to do with your body. Everything is extreme and outrageous today. The industry of outrage loves to push your buttons. It loves to hammer them all day, every day, doesn't it? <laughs> Even the means of social influencing are now being utterly polarised, playing to people's terror. The grey area, you know, the sane area, the, the area more in balance with the whims of life. Or even the magically objective sustainable truth seems utterly unappealing. People are forced into polar extremes because it's the only thing that seems strong. That's the only thing that seems to endure. Creating things that endure and survive inherently appeals to people's innate sense of fear. The same people who are played by the ruling class, full of groups who distort and delete the truth to the point where it's almost completely warped. Not quite an outright lie, almost defensible really, since the evidential roots are still there as a means of plausible deniability. Ultimately, the institutions of politics and religion are in bed with the ruling class. They always have been. They come together like a bad episiotomy. They legislate their own interests. They call it morality. And they defend it with the patchwork quilt of the noble and hooligans known as the law enforcement agencies, all out of the need to greedily feather their own nests. And when they're caught, they act as cowards. How do I know this? There's no way to vote against banks and their widespread corporate interests. As long as you're white, middle class, and rich, it smiles all the way until illness and tragedy befalls you. You know, real life. The thing they can't stand. Then you're on your own. Then you are the enemy. You are the other. You are the one... Everyone else loves to hate. 
I am treating myself with cannabis, a dangerous, dangerous substance. Oh no, I'm the other, in so many others' eyes. They always seem to find some way or another to demonize my argument, or find something else to push against. Not even just playing devil's advocate, but out of fear. It only occurs to them that I might be wrong out of their own fear. You see, the word that the ruling class use through their puppet politics, freedom, in their definition, has become the freedom only to choose from a limited menu of options. So, no real freedom at all, then. Real freedom is a spiritual desire. To know yourself in the first measure of your highest self. That requires a flexible standard, rather than the stubborn one the mob mentality of the masses demand from their leaders. The one they think is so reliable. The one they get together in large groups to just worship endlessly. Bow down before your master. <laughs> Haven't we learned anything from the Iraq war? Pride goes before a fall. You think the religious right Republican base would understand that? Being as, I don't know, they value the Bible so much. <laughs> Their lack of adherence to what is actually within the book they love so much proves that Christians are all too often the last possible people you can expect to be Christ-like. But I don't think I'm giving the left wing an easy time either. <laughs> what the Democrats in America and most left wing groups need to grasp is that the strongest tree in a storm of pressure merely learns to bend. It doesn't mean uprooting its foundation, abandoning principles and caving out of fear. So what stance do you take when both sides are almost equally full of shit? Now, I think the right wing are far more full of shit, really, but it's a different kind of shit, I suppose. It's, it's evil, and then there's being a mafia wife. <laughs> if you spend your time around socially responsible, intelligent hippies, you might assume everyone in the world is the same way and become a social liberal. Yeah? If you spend time around drug students every day of your life, you might become a social conservative who hates the young. So much of your life is down to chance of environment. You know, they, you think that's solid. You assume it's solid. That's the issue. People only see what they want to see. They assume life runs by their upheld standards. And that's a huge fallacy. I'm a social creature. I need others to live life to the fullest. When the group mentality comes into effect, I turn off. Because the group agenda can never represent me and who I fully am. I don't align myself to one belief system. My primate brain doesn't care about absolute ideas. It cares about eating and fucking and feeling secure and all of that. And I don't totally live from that place, no, make no mistake. I identify with it as part of my humanity. I feel free to let it off the leash in creative supply ways when I can. That's called being sane. Now I might dip in and out of certain things, because no one sat down to listen to me and where I was at, and I don't think my vote of choice to their system, be it Social or political or individual really makes a shred of difference to such conceited classes of self-interest, anyway. You see, Democrats and Republicans are just the same. The business party will always be there, pulling the rules of consistency, of authority, social proof, demonization, all the rules of influence. The campaign process and results are all the same, no matter whom you vote for. So the cycle leads to the rule of tyrants at some point. What makes a tyrant? Well, I watched a documentary called Human Remains on the Great World War II Dictators. I noted that they were all under the surface the following. Strong-willed, mentally paranoid, sexually perverted, perpetually physically ill, or weak. <laughs> and with banal social interests, like the rest of us. I've talked at length about the uh, banality, brutality, duality that so much of society seems to follow. Well, you know... Mussolini, for example, he was a masculine elitist who believed in ruling the feminine mob with an iron fist. And probably from some deep-rooted sense of dick fear. All that's required for these monsters to be followed is for... The mediocre disenfranchised masses to project their secret disavowed values and abilities onto a charismatic, articulate, likeable, consistent authority who a lot of people blindly follow because they don't think for themselves whose view of the world seems powerful, authoritative, consistent, likable, reciprocal, and with social proof. Again, the six laws of influence as dictated by Robert Cialdini, a great business person. The authority will then proclaim that some particular element of society, either a minority or a majority, preferably minority, you know, prey on the weak, is a threat towards national security and social tradition, and is bringing about ruin, thus playing to the fear of the masses. The authority will then push the belief that it is God's will that this minority be punished, oftentimes, with violence for everyone's good, even the good of the minority in question. 
the widespread suppression of any individual thought of dissent then occurs, particularly in the mind of the young, repression of intellectual and sexual energy. The minority of the political left, who are oftentimes not represented fully, are then demonized for their lack of, like, resolve, their lack of patriotism. After a while, this affects the collective emotional vibration of the masses, and they actually produce the hell they feared the most. This is exactly why I despise group mentality. So, what do I do? The only other thing I can. I pick and choose the best of their belief and trash the, trash the rest. Just trash it. The, the only thing I found worked for me, regardless, was esoteric transcendental meditation. There are plenty of teachers out there if you get past the guru's self-importance, the bad marketing, everyone else's, ooh, don't trust the gurus, and stories of false hope. It seems all structures in society get too bloated for their own good when they refuse to recognize the truth. A man's spirit moves between polar extremes and dualities to know itself in its fullest dimensions and to not take its words at face value. Right now, we're way over the other end into bloated corruption across the board. Fear has infected everything. Yep, I pick and choose from all religions and politi political structures to decide for myself, but the metaphor applies, so I'll, I'll use it here. We're in what the Hindus called Kali Yuga, the last stage of delusion where everything is corrupted. Everything is corrupted. By a matter of degree. We're seeing that now with the Occupy movement, and that incredible Republican corruption is occurring on a vast scale, that Mitt Romney is a son of a bitch that should not be trusted with a knife and fork, let alone the presidency of the United States of America, and the blind refusal of the mainstream media to cover things in the same way, as Western civilization seems to stand, as always, on something of a knife edge. Now, I don't want there to be another French Revolution, but from what I've seen being displayed, is there any other way out? The banks cannot be bailed out. The currency in which they are based upon is completely artificial. The gold standard has been utterly removed. If there is requirement for another bailout, the government will not do it. Hyperinflation will occur. And that could lead to literally the collapse of Western civilization. They have a problem. Folks, I'll tell you the one thing you're never going to hear from almost anyone, except maybe Bill Maher. I don't know about any of this. I don't know what's going to happen. Perception is a dance between imagination and the physical world, which occurs in the only moment which has ever existed. Right now. You can't stick a linguistic label on that or turn it into an element of ego, the personal story, which only recognizes mental beginnings, which inevitably lead to tragic ends. Eckhart Tolle goes hugely into this. Read this man. As structures collapse, as they always do, I find myself thinking, in the words of Rodney King, can't we just get along? At what point do we recognize that efforts to radicalize and politicize individuals and one ultimate way of thinking is only going to lead to violence. I'm going to end by quoting a poem and by giving you some how-to information. This is something I wrote called Defense Mechanism. It's part of a song I'm writing, it's part of my crazy progressive extreme metal thing called Roar of the Masses. Sensory distortion begats linguistic contrition that severs our personas into a game of give and take. The institutions that arise tend to fear and reprisal in a twisted social nightmare where nobody knows the stakes. The chemical broth conditions your self-image with toxic phantom cells that parrot shots and pull the strings. We we'll rationalize our decisions to hate and fear our inner visions. Inside this mind except survival, there are no rules and no one wins. All of the opposing elements I listed in that poem are levels of consciousness. These systems are all the same. Through being too rigid and stubborn, they turn into a means of treating people like cattle, so sow their own demise from the beginning of something else. They're like bullies. I have a system of dealing with any bully. In this case, a bully is a form of opposition, an individual, a physical force, or a bad idea. There are six stages to this. You start as a victim with regards to some bullying force. You whine, you bitch, and complain. You feel like shit. That's stage one. Then, after a while, stage two, you get angry and lash out. You, know, you might, might piss other people off. So be it. You're angry. Why deny it? Stage three, you understand why you're angry. You critically think. 
you become angry with a point. With a point! Your mind and body are both active together. Now you're pushing hard to change. You're as bad as those move on emails that you get in your email inbox. You know? Not much is probably going to happen. You're probably going to delete that right out of your mind, like those move on emails in your inbox. Then, and perhaps here's the biggest leap, you develop superego. You transcend your perspective and see it is just that. You learn to apply various levels of physical force and intelligence to the moment to see what you can do intelligently to change your physical sensations from negative feedback to warm positive feedback. Stage 5. Then your perspective is sufficiently loose not to care anymore. You learn to accept with what is in front of your face relative to your present moment ability. Finally, stage 6. Not only do you not care, you don't care that you don't care. You're not even thinking about it anymore. It's just part of who you really are. Not who you say you are. Who you really are. NLP, NLP therapists, new linguistic programmers, so to speak, call this unconscious competence. I myself call it being a badass motherfucker. So ultimately, I feel all these political and reg religious ideologies who have turned into bullies are really just responses to energy forces in the moment. All structures are built on energy. Energy is movement. Nothing happens until something moves. So you move from adopting one belief to swinging to the other when it becomes a conceit. Then you mix the best of both into your own. You walk the line. After a while, you trust it so well that you forget about it. Then things go beyond symbology. They become subconscious. They become about living. The symbols become what they symbolize, which is the dream of equalizing energy forces, meeting things in flow, and feeling a deep sense of happiness. There will always be some underlying structure, you're presuming, mentally, is the first principle over this emotional experience, this spiritual thing, which I am assuming, merely only assuming, is going on. I don't pretend to really believe spirituality is the empirical truth. It's just working out for me right now. Christianity, atheism, Buddhism, New Age structures, all, you know, they all underlie mentally what might be going on. But all structures become shackles. All non-belief pivots another way, because your perspective is being driven by something you have not fully adopted as the driving force. That maybe you cannot adopt as the driving force. This is something that no one but yourself can understand. It's direct experience of your essential spirit. And the words you speak are only relevant to your holding pattern in the moment. I don't expect anyone else to grasp this notion of social transcendence. That I've explained in both this video and the one previous in this series. In fact, I'm considering this will be my last video for quite a while. But nonetheless, here are some how-to steps. 1. The sensory distortion. You change what the Toltecs, a group of esoteric seers, call the assemblage point. This is a process too big to go into with the time I have left. But Google the terms Toltec, T-O-L-T-E-C, teachings, Toltec legacy, legacy? Hmm. and Renaissance press, R-E-N-A-S-E-E, -E -E, oh sorry, R-E-N-A-S-E. C E N T Press to purchase the first volume of the Toltec teachings. If you wish to learn how to do this, that is, I warn you, this is high-end esoteric teaching and not for the timid. It will teach you how to create your own personal habits and beliefs beyond the social environment that you just happen to be born in. <laughs> but dealing with language and semantics, practice no thought, practice presence. Listen to Eckhart Tolle recordings for this. Learn to challenge the semantics of your opponents. Read between the lines of emotional subtext. Do your research on whatever you happen to debate and believe on. Be ready for war. Read the book 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene for overcoming underhanded and overhanded social warfare. 3. For identity and personal story. Change it. Use the Abraham Hicks vibrational scale to come into alignment with your handwritten personal goals, as they should be, and full of self. Disregard the image and use that they present, which is, by the way, creepy and, and something for nothing, and use their processes as a tool for enhancing bodily sensation. If you do that, and you really follow it through and experience joy, things will change. 4. For education. Educate yourself to satisfaction, whether that's winning at school or doing your own research. For the former, I highly recommend you check out a company called The Teaching Company, a great internet business that run degree, university degree level audio series on hundreds of topics. For work and business. Reverse engineer the structure of whatever it is you are working at so it fits your personality and your ultimate handwritten goals. I recommend the work of Marcus Buckingham, the book's Work the System. It's a PDF online. Getting Things Done by David Allen. And for those that are really dedicated, 
anything Nitro Marketing puts out under the name Local Business Money Machine. For those who are truly dedicated, ready to seek abundance, this is what you will follow for maximum benefit. This is what you can follow. It's one path, one of many, but it re reaps the benefits if you followed me this far. For culture, sex, build your own. <laughs> build your own. Make your own art. Make your own music. Build a YouTube channel. Get people debating. Hey, I did. Seven, for politics. Pick and choose the best. Yeah, stand in the middle as best as you can. Don't be a moderate airy fairy, though. Things deserve, you deserve to be pissed off about certain things. Your, your leaders are actively lying to you. They're selling your country to people who didn't give a shit whether you live or die. That should make you angry. Follow these rules of bullying that I have given you with any issue. Eight, for religion. Create your own god. Listen to other points of view. I recommend Buddhist primers. The book Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh for a, maybe not an absolute point of view, but it's as close to absolute air point of view that I could come across. Asking is Given by Abraham Hicks, again, and the Toltec teachings as previously mentioned. Nine, for the media and the law, hell, even the military, throw out your TV channels, get off Facebook, leave your boring friends behind, ignore information, it's got calorific value, ignore banality of all sorts. Of all sorts. All and any sort whatsoever. They like you their teeth anyway. Build a strong will. Question authority. And ten. For medicine. And those who know me. <laughs> know what I'm going to say here. Grow your own hemp. Now. I'm not trying to offer too much advice. But take life seriously. Take life seriously. Or you'll die with regret. Your growth is important. But consider now. The selfishness in this day and age is expanding your notion of self to encompass everything and everyone else. My final point, can't escape consequence. This is the time of understanding. Everything is one. 32 minutes. First take. That's good. Time now is 11 past 12, 1st of September, 2012. I'm just waiting for this to reach 3232 in lieu of my numerology studies, just for fun. La la. Have a great day, and enjoy your life. Peace.